And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we've, we're, we're going to tackle space. Namely because we don't have any of it explored yet. Um, when I say any of it, I mean, well, the star map's looking very, very bare. We've literally only explored this section. So we want to put together ourselves together a nice rad bolt engine and use that to do the exploration. Of course, these things require a large amount of rad bolts, so we're going to have to generate a lot of radiation. Now, there's several different ways to do it, but I think I've struck upon a fun way at least to do it. Now, one second while we, we start to put this together, what we're going to need is rad bolts to come in at exactly this height. We are not going to be doing anything too fancy here. We're going to put in, well, seven rad bolt generators right here. That should generate more than sufficient rad bolts. Well, combined with some other tricks we'll be doing. All of those uh, will get pointed to the right, and they should be able to shoot that engine, and we'll put maybe one or two more engines to the right of that so we can capture them all. But we're not going to be depending on space for the radiation. Space just gives off a nice 25 rads. The problem is uh, eventually these things will overheat. They do generate heat, and without anything to interface with, that would cause problems. So we need to put in some sort of liquid or some sort of backing that will help them transfer their heat away. The plan here is pretty simple. Now this is just the start, don't worry, this is not our end goal in terms of generating radiation, it's just a nice way of doing it. What we're going to have is all the radiation, or all the nuclear waste overflow from our reactor. All that nuclear waste is now going to be dumped up here. Then what'll happen is it'll form a second layer and then it'll pour over the edge and disappear into the vacuum of space. This just gives us lots of fresh nuclear waste constantly coming through. Now, rads-wise, it's not going to be that great to be honest, but we have plans to improve upon that. Plus there's loads of radioactive contaminants in there. Though there's a few extra steps we're going to have to take to really boost this production up. I want like six, eight hundred, maybe even a thousand rads in this sector. So yeah, to do that we're going to have to get a little bit more creative. But once once this is filled up and we've got enough uh, nuclear waste in here, we can add on our, uh, our little booster section. So above this, we're going to clamp down a reactor. We're literally just going to throw down a nuclear reactor right here. Cooling, why bother? We're, we're not going to bother with cooling. We're going to let it explode because, well, then it gives off loads of radiation, I suppose. So that seems like the best plan. Let's just let a reactor go critical. We get lots of radiation out of it. We harvest that radiation for our rad bolt generators. All we got to do is surround it in bunker tiles because the explosion it gives off is basically meteorite explosions. So as so long as you've got it surrounded in bunker tiles or bunker doors, no worries. To get this design to work correctly, and by correctly I mean making the reactor explode quickly and efficiently, what we want to do is really meter the amount of water going in there. What we want to do is only get 30 kilos of water in there, which is enough to trigger the reactor to start running. And then, once those 30 kilos have been turned into steam, the whole thing won't have anywhere else to vent heat, so it should pop. However, we don't want to waste too much uranium as well, because all the uranium that's left in there will get turned into corium, and we'll cover more on that later. So what we've done is, we've got this little container here. This container has, what, enriched uranium in it? And we're going to limit it to 5 kilos. So the theory should be is we flip this switch, this will activate the reactor. The reactor will then go, hey, give me uranium, and which puts this auto sweeper will go, here's 5 kilos. We'll dump in some water at the same time, and then, well, the doors will all be closed, no one else can get in there to put in any more uranium, and then we'll just wait till the whole thing pops. Once it pops, we open back up the doors again, and harvest all that beautiful, beautiful radiation. That's the theory. Uh, but first we need a little liquid reservoir over here, so we've got some water on demand. And, ooh, yeah, we're going to probably want to put some radioactive waste in here as well. Just something for uh, all that nice germ contaminants to go into. Oh, and we should probably put in backing plates, shouldn't we? That would be a smart idea. We are going to make a reactor out of copper. I was playing around with steel, I think, but you know what? We'll, we'll make it out of copper and see what happens. I'm curious if you make it out of lead, would the whole reactor actually melt down before it could explode? Meaning it wouldn't actually be able to go critical? Uh, I don't know, that requires testing. But up here, we're just dumping in some nuclear waste at the bottom because when this thing goes critical and starts popping off, it releases a whole bunch of radioactive contaminants, and it's nice to have a little bit of a medium there to soak some of that stuff up. It doesn't really matter what you use, but radioactive waste is cheap and plentiful. We are just about ready to go. All we're going to do is close down the top so that nothing can escape out of there, and we're going to put in a bunker door right here as well. That will seal in the whole thing, and then we can maybe, uh, let, let the whole thing explode and see what happens. So, doors are all closed. Now let's just have a quick go over the automation here because it's not really that complicated even though there's many switches. It's just I have one switch for the bunker door at the bottom, one for the dump bunker door on the side, and one for the bunker door on the top. This is just so we can quickly dump in a bunch of uh, nuclear waste whenever we want to, and this one is just to open this door so we can go in and service and de deconstruct and reconstruct the reactor when necessary. And this bottom door is to dump out the nuclear waste so we can harvest all of that beautiful rads down here. 
Then over this section, well, you know what? Let's actually show it. We go on the signal switch here, and we'll go into the automation overlay, and you can see this activates the reactor. And when that activates the reactor, that auto sweeper is going to fill it full of, well, uranium, enriched uranium. At the same time, that will activate this liquid shutoff, which will allow water to flow into the reactor. So we turn that on, and one, two, yep, it, has that delivered the enriched uranium? I do believe it has. In that case, we can turn off this switch. That turns off this liquid shutoff. Liquid shutoff stops allowing the water in, and oh, we let in 40 kilos. You know what? That's fine. 40 kilos doesn't make a difference. Ah! And you can see here this radiation or this radioactive waste is pouring in and now it's pouring over the edge and disappearing into the background of space. This sort of acts as cooling while at the same point time it dumps in a, a little bit of, you know, extra radiation as it goes along. And by cooling, I mean, this stuff is 250 degrees or something, but or 200 plus degrees, but these Radvolt generators don't melt until they hit their actual melting point of 2726. So as so long as we keep pouring nuclear waste through here, no bothers at all. Oh, at the same time, let's see if I can extend this on. We want to split that. Half the radiation, half the radioactive waste we want to go in here because we do want to have a pool to draw upon and the other half will go up here. But let's watch this sucker explode. This is fairly straightforward. You'll see here we've got the water. That water is going to heat up until it hits 400 degrees. Once it hits 400 degrees, it will get spit out of the reactor and drop down here. Then, well, the enriched uranium is going to keep heating up because it'll have nothing to dump its heat into. Now that, all that's happening here is the water keeps the enriched uranium from popping. But once that water is expended, the enriched uranium will just start burning up and oh my god, did I leave enough in there? You know what? We'll find out in a minute. Let's fast forward this. So, the first 30 kilos got spit out. The second, well, the 10 kilos is now going to heat up to 400 degrees and get spit out. At which point, the enriched uranium has nowhere to dump the temperature but into itself. And now it's going to get really, really toasty in there. And 2000... 2500 and there we go reactor meltdown now let's just enjoy the explosion the great thing about this though is the um the explosion can't really escape the the containment field we've got set up for the bunker tiles so this thing is just going to pop and well that was uh pretty small i was expecting a little bit a little bit more spectacular to be honest now this corium is this is stuff here that uh that waste that's corium waste that stuff's a bit of a problem in that you can't mine it out unless you have the correct skills for it. And by correct skills, let's go down here to Shabir. Yep, they've got Corium Mining. It's the final digging skill. So you need to actually have a special skill to dig this stuff out. And the Corium should be in tiny amounts here. You'll notice that it's only grams. And I think the reason for that is I, I there was only a tiny amount of uranium in there to, to form this. But radiation-wise, mmm, delicious. 1,300 rads in there. That is um, a lot. So, first things first, we're going to turn that off. Oh, actually, we should maybe disable the nuclear waste coming in here for a while. There's no point pouring in anymore. I mean, why? We've got more than enough nuclear waste we're about to be dumping in in a second. This opens up. And we might want to dig out that corium up there. In fact, uh, let's make you and you ready to be dug. And we can open these, this door over this side as well. Though we might want to close it afterwards. This place is going to get, um, well, let's just say there's a lot of radiation in there and anyone who goes near it is going to get exposed to quite a bit. That's a lot of rads. And poof, all of that radioactive waste dumps down here. Nice. Yeah, so what's the, what are we looking at? 500, 4, 5, mm, 1500 here. Oh man, you know what? I'm thinking the mistake I made here was the the really radioactive stuff is floating on top. Look at that, 1900 rads? Oh, no. We need to delete this tile. That was my mistake. If I had let the waste flow down here, it would have pushed all of this out of it. Yeah. Oh, God. Shabir is going to get a, a little bit of exposure there. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, you. Yeah, you can get repaired. What are you at? Whoa. Oh, those things fired. Uh... No, I want you to not fire. You are off. You could have accidentally clipped a dupe with that and killed them. All right. Now, if we've done this right, let's see. Yeah, the radiation. Yeah, that's much better. Look at that. That's slowing down all the way. So all we need to do is, yeah, drop the layer at level. Perfect. Nice. In fact, we'll put one more tile there. Nice. So, what are we looking at? 700, 700. Okay, could be better, could be worse. But that should give us a nice boost. The great thing is that re that reactor, it 
basically gives off oh god look at that it, it, you can see the glow it's just spreading out like an enormous at enormous ranges even through the bunker tiles you can see it like that's that's 100 rads 240 and it's through bunker tiles oh my god but this means all of these should ramp up rather quickly and um, we should hopefully be able to fill these rapidly we're going to put a drywall tile there uh, we can probably you know what we'll close this door there's no point keeping this door open and we don't want anyone going in there anyway and uh, we'll finish off this. So, yeah, Kay, how you doing, buddy? Your uh, your rad's exposure, 23, 24, 40? Yeah, you'll be fine. Just keep moving, keep moving. Yeah, you'll get rid of most of that. Absorb dose is 19. They, they'll, once they use the bathroom, they get rid of 60, so it's not a big deal. That should allow us to fill these up rather nicely. In fact, let's just uh, turn these on and get a few. Ooh, that's a lot of rad bolts. Perfect. Well, we'll let those sit there and soak up all that juicy juicy radiation and in the meantime we're going to have to build our rocket um rocket wise we're going to use this as our scout ship so let's build ourselves a nice little scout rocket oh we're gonna have to pipe in oxygen to this as well this was fairly straightforward to put together we actually put the spacefare module at the bottom normally you put it at the top but i thought why that just means they have further to travel oxygen wise we have oxygen getting pumped up here that oxygen gets stored in the very large gas cargo container we're up to 160 kilos we're, we're probably going to invest in more before we launch them but that's fine and on the interior of the rocket here nothing too complicated this is pretty much a carbon copy of our last one except we stuck in a telescope up here uh, the reason being we're well they can use the bathrooms in here they've got a whole supply of dirt to keep the toilets running we put the gas vent down here now putting the gas vent on the ground floor is well a bit of a knife edge thing on one hand, what it'll do is every time ga carbon dioxide is inhaled in here, it will eventually overwrite the gas or it'll go to the gas vent and it'll get overwritten by the oxygen coming in. So you don't have to worry about carbon dioxide. It just gets auto-deleted. On the downside, though, if you mess up the bathroom setup and the, the two peas in here, it will overpressurize the vent or it'll cause the vent to get uh, covered in liquid. But that the, the vent will be lower than two kilos of pressure, which means it'll just keep spitting oxygen in here until the whole place overpressurizes and you've got 20 to 50 kilos of oxygen pressure in here that can be a little bit awkward so just make sure that you've got all your priorities sorted for your toilets when you use it we'll we'll cover that in a minute for now though i want to make a few minor changes here now uh, this this reactor is almost done we've pretty much harvested all the decent reds we're going to get out of it so we're going to deconstruct it and pop it again but before we do that i want to make some changes i want to get some lead tiles here and i want to replace that with lead namely because well i don't want all that radiation leaking out <laughs> It's just the amount of radiation it was giving off was pretty intense, so I think if we just, you know, stop them from releasing... Well, we layer it in lead, that will help, help mitigate the amount of radiation our dupes get exposed to. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but I'd like to do it. While we're waiting for the rocket to be topped up at oxygen, what are we up to? 650 kilos of oxygen. Let's just pop one more reactor really quickly. And yeah, we'll slow that down a bit, uh, make sure we've got the switch selected, and then turn it on. Oh, and we picked a loading time to do it in. Perfect. All right, so what we don't want to do here is let more than four bubbles of oxygen in. Okay, well, we have to wait till that. Yep, you delivered the uranium. Perfect. Or five bubbles. Ah, oh, damn it. You know what? We can do it this way? Yeah. Perfect. 30 kilos go in. Okay, a little bit sneaky, I will admit. And... Done. Alright, so that's 30 kilos, yeah, 40 kilos of water in there, that's going to pop and we'll get a whole bunch more radiation to work with. So by using this method, I feel like in a roundabout way, our Radbolt engine is powered by nuclear reactor fallout from exploded reactors. I think that's just a far cooler way to get around the galaxy than, uh, I don't know, get, getting, the, getting the radiation any other way. There are, actually, we'll go through one other way of getting the radiation that's a lot more sustainable than this, because this is, wow, that was a pathetic explosion, there really just was not enough, uh, Maybe there wasn't enough uranium in there to make it any fun. But what are we up to? Yeah, a thousand rads in there. You know what? Let's uh, let's open the doors and see what this does to all our rad bolt generators. The radiation down there has definitely dropped down. What are we looking at? 200 rads? Yeah, it was about 100 rads before we popped the reactor. So once we pour this out, it should definitely improve. And also, hmm, actually, you know what? We'll leave the corium in there for now and we'll turn off auto repair on these. I don't want anyone going in those there to repair those. Th there's no point just yet. Considering, you know... It's also highly radioactive in there. Oh, you can actually see that nice little... Oh, there's 1,400... 2,500. There's no way that could last. 2,700 rads? 
What's the kind of charge rate on that? Yeah, 2,734 rad volts a cycle. Okay, yeah. That allows you to rapidly build up a lot of rad bolts. I think we've got more than enough to charge your engine for a while. Right. I think the person we're going to send on this is going to want to be really good at research because we want them to go out and just explore and, well, knock out all of the uh, the local astronomy. Plus, the range on this rocket is actually pretty good. If we check this here, you can see uh, range is 24 tiles, which means we can go 12 tiles one direction and then 12 tiles back. And all in a nice compact rocket. Uh, but before we send them out, a couple of things we got to do. One, we got to, uh, well, put the crew on board, which is fine. We've got Sinathrak in here. Now, their research skill is, well, pretty epic. It's 20. They've got a base research of 20, plus two from one of the skills we've given them. Uh, the only skills they've actually got is in astronomy, so they can use the telescope, which is their only purpose right here. La local colony Laxus, oh, whatever. Now, once we're in here, the first things we want to do is we want to enable the outhouse so that they have a toilet they can use. Wait, what is with the radiation you're giving off? Uh, yeah, there's there's tiny amounts of rats in here. It'll be fine. Uh, so they can enable the toilet. And now we want to change their priorities just a smidge. You see, the thing is, they they will keep doing the telescope constantly because their highest priority right now is science. But we need to take that down a notch because otherwise they won't redo the toilet and the toilet will just sit there and... Let me show you. You're going to want to come into here into priorities and you're going to want to make life support, toggling and tidying the top priorities for this pawn or this dupe and then you're going to make researching well you're going to crank researching down just a little bit below it this way you'll make sure that they fill the outhouses that allows them to clean out the outhouse and life support allows them to fill up the, la the outhouse and toggling is for turning on and off buildings because you are going to want to turn off the rocket control station at times this makes sure that the dupe takes care of all the stuff in here without letting the toilets overflow Otherwise, you'll end up with pee all over the floor and be like, wait, what happened? I, I thought I'd given them a toilet. Anyway, let's launch this because we've done one other little sneaky thing and we'll see how it works. What we've done is, give us a launch. We have set this to do a round trip. Its round trip is to go up into space, just into orbit around the planet, and then come right back down and land again. But what we want to see is, how much radiation does this thing give off? Okay, significant hazard. That's, uh... Oh, wow, that thing is slow. Even This is slow speeds, by the way. Wow, that is a lot of radiation. 4,600. All right. I think we need some way to catch that fallout. That's so much radiation. Oh my god. Right, that's, um, that's one way to do it. And here comes the rocket right back down again. I think it's, we set it to do a rotation so where it goes into orbit and lands back down. That doesn't cost anything. Which means you could theoretically just get it to keep doing this again, and again, and again, and again, generating you just ungodly amounts of radiation. How are you looking there? Yeah, is it automatically going to launch again? It should in theory, right? Oh wait, it's got to do the cargo transfer. One second, what is this at? Uh, if we set that to... Oh, 1300 kilos? Well, then the whole rocket's full, right? No need to acknowledge warnings. Well, let's try this one more time. We're going to do the launch sequence, let it launch. Once it's launched and comes back down again, we're going to see if it auto-launches the second time. And it comes right back again. Yeah, you could use this with steam rockets as well to generate enormous amounts of resources. Okay, no, doesn't seem to auto-launch. You have to begin the launch sequence, even though I set it to toggle a round-trip flight between this rocket's destination and its original takeoff location. But, oh damn, there's no... Automation signal. Maybe there's an automation signal we can do to make sure that this keeps launching and landing constantly. Well, a very simple setup. We just threw the uh, automation wire across the bottom. I'm thinking once we set this gas tank to... Oh, you at 1400? Yeah, 1400 should be fine. Then that should auto-launch immediately. Okay, that turns green. Auto Perfect. Okay, let's see if it comes back in a minute. That doesn't seem at all broken, not even a little bit. And five, four, three, two, and off we go again. Okay, free energy, I love it. Free energy and free water if you use the steam rocket. So free water, free power. Oh, free rad bolts as well if you want. How much radiation have we generated doing this? Oh my God, 12,600. How is that possible? 
259,000 rads. Or no, sorry, 27,000 rads. Um, you know what? Let's 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 shut that down for a second. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. We'll load you up and we're gonna send you on your actual reconnaissance mission. We are crewed up, we are good to go, we can acknowledge the warnings, which is cargo transfer is incomplete, and then we can begin the launch sequence. The whole point of this rocket, we are going to head out to about here, and we are going to do some actual scanning. We want to see what the skies have to offer, and what other planets there are out there. Just got, I don't know if we got this early enough to get the tree so we can get super coolant, or we were too early, as in, I believe that was added in after I generated the map, though I could be wrong. Let's find out. And star map wise, how long is that going to take? Damn, okay. Speed, you have 24 tiles remaining and you move at a speed of 1.4 tiles per cycle. Well, once you get out there, we'll uh, we'll let you explore to your heart's content. Wow, they can actually scan while they're moving. That's something I didn't know. Right. And of course, because your science skill is so high, you basically rapidly knock everything out. Oh, and that should be your table. Yeah, I forgot the dining table. We've put it in there now, which should give them... Great Hall, Latrine, Barracks, they should have plenty of morale to support all of this. And uh, let's have a quick check of your, uh, damn it, yeah, let's have a quick check of your morale. Thir yeah, 13 requirement, 32 in the bag. You will be fine. Oh, I forgot to make sure they could consume the, uh, there it is, berry sludge. Sinathrak is now allowed to consume the berry sludge, which they will find 50 kilos of in this fridge, namely because it does not go off. All right, uh, why are you not scanning? Oh, yeah, you've taken everything in range. Perfect. We can move them out to there, then we can still move them on. In fact, I think they should be able to go all the way to the edge of the map in this one run. Namely because of just, there's that much fuel inside the rocket. And hail the conquering hero returns. Bringing with them lots and lots and lots of radiation. Though I still haven't figured out a way to harvest that radiation that shows up there. Though I'm pretty sure there's some ways we should be able to maybe build some blocks beneath this to capture it. I'll have to do some experimentation on the side. But they have returned and they didn't actually have a lot of oxygen left. There was 260 kilos of oxygen left in the tank when they got back. They went on a long set of a walkabout. They went all the way over here and around. As you can see, they explored a lot. Uh, from what I can see, looking around these things, you get these in, this inspect option, but I don't think it actually does anything. I think it's just something vestigial left over from when you click on uh, a building or something like that. Could be wrong, but we'll have a look later. For now, we have found the, the ice planet, which basically has ice and an iron volcano, but it seems to be, judging by the lack of biomes on that planet and this planet, they only have two biomes and one vent in them. I am imagining they are absolutely tiny. But hey, if you want gassy moves, we can go there. This icy asteroid field, ice, oxygen, carbon dioxide, chlorine, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything here that takes my fancy as stuff I really want, like rust, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, water, no, none of these are any good. Though I do have to do more, some more exploration, wow, there's actually way more to explore down here, so we have to explore down here, over here, and up there, I might actually have to put together a whole second rocket just to continue the exploration. On this side, I sort of threw together a second rocket, it's uh, basically an exact duplicate here, this one's going to be for a second person to go out and do the telescoping because I want to explore the entire area and there's no point half, you know, half-assing this. We want to do it. We want a whole ass. So, uh, in the background though, I've been sort of coring out biomes. I've been really wanting to core out lots of biomes. It's just we never had time. We were always rushing from one thing to the next. So right now I'm just, well, demolishing everything. It feels so much better to start demolishing the map, but there's still loads of it left to be demolished. I think I'm going to have to do a massive, massive set of just Dig, well, dig commands, followed up by a massive 24-hour sweep, or just uh, do a sweep and then let the game run for 12 hours. Oh, you, dig that out just in case you two are trapped in there. I am also opening up all these areas in here because it has lots of poke shell molts. I have no idea how many of you've harvested, but it's like about 40 or 50 at the time things have shown up. Okay, but there is one thing I want to test, one thing we can uh, exploit for our benefit. Uh, this here, normal Radbolt engine, but what we've done is we've stuck a bunch of nuclear waste beneath it. Now, I don't think nuclear waste is absolutely necessary. You could probably get away with petroleum or something like that. But if we check, say, the radiation levels on this, you see 97 rads, 80, 80, so 122. It's, you know, reasonable levels of radiation. But what we're going to do is we're going to crew this sucker up. And after we crew it up, 
we're going to set it on a little bit of a round trip scenario where it keeps launching and landing just to demonstrate something. Oh, here they come now. Perfect. Okay, we will acknowledge the warnings and begin the launch. In fact, uh, let's put a little automation wire down here. Oh, damn it, I don't think they'll be able to reach that, will they? You know what, it's fine. I'm going to do like five or six launches and landings. And if you'll notice... Oh, that's a very glowy green. That's up to 3,000 rads. Two th yeah, it's about 800 at the bottom and 3,000 at the top. Though it goes down a lot. It basically produces an enormous amount of radioactive contaminants and dumps them into the nine tiles below the engine. So you've got... One, two, three, four, five, six... Yep, there, 9 by 3 So with a normal a engine, you get like a 9 by 3 exhaust of heat that just passes through everything in its way. With this, you get a 9 by 3 exhaust of radioactive contaminants. doesn't seem to heat things up. You'll notice that the temperature there is 131. This does not produce a lot of heat, but it does produce a lot of radiation. Uh, give me five minutes while I set up some uh, automation to make this round trip a few times. With a little bit of an automation wire hooked up here, and we've just set it to constantly on. And we've also set the, uh, the destination to orbit looped. It just keeps taking off and landing again and again and again. Now, any guesses as to how much radiation we've managed to cram into the, the topmost tiles here? Well, if your guess was 22,000 rads, yeah, that, that was that was an amazingly good guess because it's 22,000 rads, 23,000 rads. 24, oh, we just topped 24, but it's gone again. <laughs> The amount of contaminants that are in there is crazy. Now, I'm, eventually you would max out, but I think there's some... Oh, there's so much potential to mine this. I think what would be the best material for this might be viscogel, because you could definitely use viscogel, put it upright, and then you have lots of room left to write. This uh, sealing it in a tank, I think you'd have to chop off the top level here and then use some deflectors or... Let's just say this would be a little bit difficult to get the rad radiation out of here and around to the engines again. You'd have to do some deflection. But considering the amount of radiation you can generate... 26,000. Hmm, nice. Oh, wait, wait. 27. Oops. Um. Well, turns out we melted that. Should have made it out of steel. My bad. <laughs> That means they're probably going to land over here. Or will it just crash the game? Nope, nope, there it is. You can hear it coming down. Ooh, perfect. It's fine. We can uh, we can land them back at the other place in a minute. Though that worked out spectacularly well. Yep, I think we found a way to farm as much radiation as you could possibly want. I'm pretty sure they're going to have to fix this, though. That's just way too overpowered, especially considering you can do this also with steam engines, hydrogen engines, uh, carbon monoxide engines. I wonder what you'd get if you used the sugar engines. I don't think you'd get any real residue out of that, it'd just be heat. But you could use this to generate heat, water, or radiation, whichever ones of you want. Yeah, yeah, I think it's time for me to cut it out though today. Oh, I want to show you one last thing though, one other way to get radiation that's uh, quite handy. I'll just have to pop over to the test map. Now let's have a quick play around with nuclear waste, because there is some, well, there's a lot of quirks to this new material, and they're not immediately obvious. Now the first is, it does give off radiation, actually, it's pretty minor, you're only getting about 13 to 14 degrees. So what you can do is, you can see it down here, you can set this up and you get 12 rads per, per cycle. It's, it's not a lot, but since this is airflow tiles we're using, what you can do is build an airflow tile on top, then you would say deconstruct the tiles on the side and then you can diagonally build another block. And then what you can do is you can keep doing that all the way down. So you can keep forcing this stuff. Just keep forcing it down and 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 down. Now you've compressed it all into one tiny little area and you notice the radiation there is 202 rads. So by compressing it a bunch of, a bunch of it down, you can definitely get yourself a, an infinite supply of rads. This doesn't degrade. This is just the natural radiation of the nuclear waste. And the more you compress it, just it just keeps condensing down on itself. Also, as well as that, make sure you make the uh, airflow tiles out of gold amalgam. It, it blocks the least amount of radiation. If you were to say, what's that, 202? No, oh, never mind. I just swapped this out for iron, and it seems to have made no difference. You're still getting 202 rads. Okay, that changed. Anyway, that's one way of doing it. Uh, another way is, of course, to use... The very uh, simple liquid overflow, well, the liquid compression trick, what you can do is make yourself something like this, and there's 259 kilos of petroleum in there. Then all you do is you just pump in the nuclear waste. Now, the nuclear waste should go to the bottom, 
And now the nuclear waste is on the bottom and the petroleum is on the top. And what happens is the petroleum keeps getting pushed out of the way and the nuclear waste goes down to the bottom. So this will hit 1000 kilos and then just keep going up. Let's uh, fast forward time a bit. We just uh, magicked in some nuclear waste there. And you notice, even though it's gone above 10,000 kilos, the, uh, the nuclear waste coming in just keeps pushing that petroleum blob out of the way and keeps getting forced down to the bottom. This is an old trick that's been going on forever. It's called uh, infinite liquid storage. So with about 10 or 11 tiles worth of nuclear waste crammed in there, this is up to 93 rads. And 10 or 11 tiles is pretty easy to cram in. You can pretty much dump all your nuclear waste that you ever get into one tile. And this will basically drive up the radiation here to absolutely ludicrous levels after a while. Let me, uh, let me cheat in a little bit. And there is 100,000 tiles of nuclear waste, or 100,000 ton, or 100 tons. And that means you can harvest 829 rads per cycle indefinitely. It never actually runs out. So this is basically an infinite source of radiation and you can just keep compressing more and more and more. Now there is an actual limit to how much you can put in one tile after you go above it, it starts deleting it, but I have no idea how high it is. I, I know it's pretty ludicrously high. So you can definitely get lots and lots of radiation if you really want that way. Personally, I try to avoid these infinite liquid storage glitches. They seem to, um, I don't know, they, they, they suck some of the fun out of the game for me. But now we're going to have a look at this nuclear waste down here. Now this is for pip planting. You can pip plant mutated seeds. However, the best thing to pip plant them in is nuclear waste. However, there is a problem. The freeze point of nuclear waste is 26.9 degrees. So the plant you're using will have to be at a temperature lower than that. As well as that though, there is a second issue and that is when it comes to the temperature itself. So if we grab a heat gun here, uh, grab the tent low and crank, ooh, make that maybe a little bit smaller. Now we can use that to freeze all of this. Unfortunately, it instantly turns into solid nuclear waste. That is the problem with uh, nuclear waste. If you just freeze it or bring it down below its temperature, it instantly turns into debris. Unless this here is a bunch of nuclear wastes that are all just one kilo apart. And if we just grab the heat gun here, and we're just going to freeze them all down to their solidification point, and poof. The actual change point is 1,473 kilos. You need exactly that much or more in a tile, otherwise it won't form a solid tile. So what you can do, that would be the easiest way to make nuclear waste piles, would be to grab some airflow tiles, let's say, and then, you know, wall them in, and then what you can do is you can diagonally build. So you can diagonally build that, diagonally build that, then delete the tiles on top, and then, yeah, well, you're basically going to be doing this all the way across. And then what you'll be left with is this solid waste down here that's all about, well, 2,000 kilos in a lot of positions. Then you'd have to cool down the whole area. It'll take a little bit of time, but once you do, you can basically just run this cooling through it. And there we go. It all starts to solidify. Boom. Then once it's all solidified, you can delete the top off. And now if we check the radiation levels, you'll notice radiation here is about 60, 60 rads. A little bit lower on the edges, but it's definitely all above 25, because if you want to grow mutated plants, you need the, the radiation to be above 25 rads. So the final thing to note about these is, well, the stuff can't stay inside things. Oh, there we go. That metal refinery was full of nuclear waste and no longer. What happened was the nuclear waste got spit out of it. Every every so often, I don't know exactly how, what the rules are on it. Maybe it's like once every 24 hours or something. Well, you know, once every cycle or something like that. All the stuff that's stored, all the nuclear waste that's stored inside something just gets spit out on the ground. It doesn't come out as a, a nice little neat bottle. It comes out as just a blob of nuclear waste all over the place. And this even counts for aqua tuners. This can cause severe problems, especially considering it. you can only really catch a blob of nuclear waste inside here if it gets turned off by automation. So if you have an automated aqua tuner, which let's face it, we all have automated aqua tuners everywhere for cooling purposes. If you've turned it off at any point with this and then it goes through that particular tick, it will kick that nuclear waste out of the loop. And because you can't use liquid reservoirs, because the liquid reservoirs will also have the liquid waste put kicked out of it, you can't really keep a stockpile to replenish the loop. Meaning you're just going to end up with little blobs of waste getting kicked out of the loop every so often at random intervals and you won't really be able to keep track of it. It's really annoying. Anyway, let's skip this forward a bit and see what happens to our aqua tuner and our liquid reservoir. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, that's the liquid tank done and the aqua tuner has also spit out its 10 kilos. So, yeah, nuclear waste. Very interesting, has lots of uses, but there are a few quirks to it that make it a little bit more difficult to deal with in your normal coolants. Also, you know, can't really use it in a metal refinery, and while you can use it with an aqua tuner, you do, well, what you sort of end up doing is grabbing, say, a pitcher pump like this, having a pool of 
having a pool of nuclear waste and then you sort of feed that onto your cooling loop to make sure your cooling loop is always topped up. A little bit awkward. If you want to wild plant mutated seeds, this is pretty much your best option for doing it as solid nuclear waste. It's not even that difficult to do, it's just the cost of cooling it down that'll be the problem. Very good for making uh, wild planted sleet wheat and stuff like that. Knock yourself out. However, a little bit trickier for warmer crops. So pinch of pepper nuts and something like that. I've, I've actually managed to mutate a couple of pinch of pepper nuts, so it is possible to mutate those, and this stuff will not work for them, namely because pinch of pepper nuts require, I think it's 35 degrees or above. You'll have to find an alternative source of radiation for them. And if you really want lots of radiation, yeah, you can just compress this stuff down into one tile and make yourself an enormous amount for your uh, radbolt generators. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck. <laughs> <laughs>